our readings today uh, and the prayers uh, remind us of the joy that we should have at this point um, during the season of Advent. We have that even represented in the colors that the priests wear uh, and in the color of the candle for the Advent wreath. That is a sign of the joy of this day. And why is it so joyful? Well, because the season of Advent is over halfway completed. Hooray, hooray, we're getting closer to Christmas. That's part of that joy. Um, actually, it's, we're at the exact halfway point because Christmas is on a Sunday. So this is the longest Advent that we are capable of having, which is kind of interesting. But uh, we are having a little bit of joy there as we realize how close we are getting to, yes, the end and to the beginning then of the celebration of the Nativity of the Lord, which, you know, continues beyond December 25th uh, into all the way into through the new year. And so we have this opportunity to find this joy that comes from the Lord himself. Joy is the mark of a Christian, but joy is... Um, something that is easily mixed up with kind of frivolity or uh, being super um, lighthearted uh, or kind of focused on shallow things. Joy is not any of that kind of bubbliness, but it is something a lot more firm and deep-rooted and stable, lasting and enduring. Even happiness which is different from just being bubbly, et cetera, as well. Even happiness um, is uh, different from joy because while happiness doesn't really coexist well with suffering, joy indeed does. It endures through suffering because joy is stronger than suffering. It even embraces suffering at times if it sees a greater value coming through it. And this is what John the Baptist hopes to share with his disciples today in the, in the gospel. John the Baptist is suffering for his ministry. He is in prison, and his followers are still clinging to him, even though he's trying one bit at a time to decrease so that the Lord Jesus can increase. You know, he is not the light he came to give testimony to the light, we hear from the Gospel of John. So John the Baptist, who didn't write the Gospel of John, too many Johns is confusing, right? But John the Baptist is trying to get his followers to go to Christ. And, you know, he already knows the answer to the question that he has his followers deliver today. Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? John the Baptist knows the answer to that question. It's in his heart. He carries that joy even in the midst of his suffering, even as he is imprisoned and will later be beheaded for his faithful proclaiming of the truth of the gospel of repentance. And yet his disciples are clinging to the messenger uh, more than they are to the message. And they are having trouble like some of the other disciples of John the Baptist have done they are having trouble making that transition to realize that their teacher is uh, not the light, but Jesus is. He is the one who is to come. So they um, are sent with this question, and they're happy to bring that um, as, as service of John the Baptist to the Lord Jesus. And you see that they want proof of um, who Christ is. You know, um, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? And as the Christ, we heard in our first reading today, the Lord is going to take the desert and make it bloom and do all these beautiful, all this beautiful poetic imagery of how the Lord is going to take things that are um, in bad situations and restore them or build them up or transform them through the prophet Isaiah. All of this will happen. And so Jesus says, go tell John what you see. You are seeing the lame healed and the deaf hearing, the blind seeing. Um, et cetera, et cetera, even the dead being raised. This is happening before your eyes. And if you um, can have the, have the heart to, to understand it, then yes, I am the one who is to come. But tell John that this is what you see. 
So they're looking for some concrete proof to um, who Christ is. So too then, for us in our world today, the world looks for Christians to have joy. To have joy and to have concrete proof of it. They want to see that we are joyful. But the joy of a Christian is different from the bubbliness and um, kind of shallow happiness of uh, this world. We have to show something deeper. And the way we show that, especially, is like John the Baptist, how we can endure through suffering because of a deeper meaning, a deeper value that comes through that suffering. So when times are difficult for us, do we have joy? Can we witness to that joy before others? This can only be done if we really cling to the Lord Jesus. Joy comes, John the Baptist knows, from being close to Christ and looking to him as our Savior. We heard in our responsorial psalm today, come Lord and save us. You are the one who is going to save us. We are lost, we are the lost sheep, and we need you to come find us and bring us home. That is our joy, is when we are found by the Lord, or when we seek the Lord and we pursue him. And so the greatest path, easiest path for us to find joy is to be people of prayer, to be people who spend time with the Lord. Those who, especially for our parish here on Tuesdays, um, who come to pray for one hour each week before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, or if that sounds like way too hard for you at this point, try 30 minutes. But those who do so, I promise, will experience a deeper peace, even in the midst of suffering, that will be that good evidence of the joy of a Christian. Mother Teresa knew well that this was essential. For her um, vocation, for her ministry, for her community of religious sisters, she required that they pray for an hour every day before Jesus after morning mass. So there's an hour and a half or so right there. Uh, before they went out and spent six, eight, ten hours serving the poorest of the poor. They had to spend that time with the Lord and draw from him so that they could out, go out and serve. She knew that they had to serve with joy. She said, we want to make them feel that they are loved. If we went to them with a sad face, we would only make them much more depressed. So we have to go to them with joy, but that joy especially because of the suffering that we carry in our own hearts, the suffering that we will see in those who are hurting, who are poor, um, and may be dying with illnesses. The only way we're going to um, be able to have happiness in the midst of that is through joy, by being close to the Lord, by being people of prayer. The prophet Nehemiah says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoicing in him must be your strength. Do not be sad and do not weep this day. That was from the prophet Nehemiah. But Mother Teresa said that for her sisters. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We spend this time with him. We look to him who is going to save us. And we find that joy. And then we can bring that to others. In the way that we live. So that the world can see by our deeds. That we are people of a deep lasting joy. Something deeper than the delights of this world. And the artificial bubbliness um, of uh, this world, or even the sincere happinesses of this world that can only be for a time. Joy is in Jesus. Joy is in the kingdom of Christ. And that kingdom does dwell now in the hearts of anyone who has allowed themselves to be free by making Jesus their Lord by submitting themselves to his lordship. And that joy, if we carry that in our own hearts, that joy is contagious. It will rub off on other people around us. You know, we as, as social beings, we pick up cues from people all the time. And so if we see um, people who are constantly sour, constantly bitter, resentful, um, you know, stuck in, in their own pains, that is going to affect us too, to be like that. 
But we can also turn that around by people who, through our relationship with the Lord, bring that joy uh, into this world. We can be contagious and invite others into that same freedom that comes from knowing Christ, who heals and transforms. Just as he, in this gospel today, healed and transformed those who came to him. And the disciples of John the Baptist, God willing, had their hearts changed by what they saw. Let us do the same. Let us draw close to the Lord, be people of prayer, so that we can be healed, so that we can experience a real joy, a happiness that lasts even in the midst of suffering. And then, God willing, like for Mother Teresa's sisters, our joy is going to cause us to live differently. The way that we treat others, the way that we um, reach out in mercy to those around us, the way that we give a smile to those um, who are not looking so good, the way that we focus not on ourselves but on them. Brothers and sisters, if we simply look to our own souls or to the problems of this world and stare only at those which is a very much possible in our society with so much noise all the time. If we simply do that, we will always find ourselves in a spiritual sadness because we look at the problems and not at the solution. But if we spend time every day, but especially once or twice a week in extra deep prayer with the Lord, then all of a sudden we are looking at the solution, at the one who is to come to save us, and that will turn our sadness into joy. Let us pray that we can rejoice in the Lord, who is our strength, and we can bring that joy to our family, to our friends, to our co-workers, to our neighbors, by the way that our lives are transformed.